Well, I just got off of work, and it's supposed to be a cold night tonight. It's supposed to get down to about 15, and I think it's supposed to do the same tomorrow. So we're going to have a couple of days of really cold weather, and then it's going to be back about 50 degrees. Uh, so I wanted to take the opportunity to uh, talk to you about how I deal with these really cold nights. I know other parts of the country get a lot colder than it does here in western Washington, but I would use the same strategy basically no matter how cold it was, unless... Um, I just wasn't equipped for it. So you might be able to hear in the background that I have my car running. And so that's the first thing I do when I get off of work is I start the car. So I don't have any separate heater and I don't really want one. The only real options I can think of would be to get like an electric heater and then find places to plug it in, which there isn't in this parking lot. Or the other option is using like one of those propane heaters. But those put out a lot of moisture and I already have a little bit of a problem with moisture, especially when it gets really cold like this. You get a lot of water condensating on the windows and on the windowsills. It's not so bad that I can't just wipe it off, and that's what I do every day. I just wipe it off my windows and dry it off. But I don't want to add to the problem by having a propane heater. So of course, when I get off of work, I start up my engine, and I just let it run. I set the climate control to something a little bit higher than I would normally keep the interior of the car. So right now it's up at 75 degrees, which is plenty warm. And I just let it run there for a while while I'm eating. Eating supper. I know idling is not really the best for your engine, but I actually don't do this very regularly. Uh, I live in a very temperate climate, so there's only a few really hot days and a few really cold days that I have to worry about where I will do this. So I don't really have a ton of time before I go to bed after work, especially when I'm working these uh, second shifts, the later shift. And that means that uh, basically I just eat and then uh, I climb into the back. So as you saw, it's snowing out there today. Uh, not a super common event out here, but uh, it's another cold winter, I guess. So uh, we're getting a few inches of snow tonight, probably. Uh, and that means my boots are covered in snow and I don't want them in the back seat with me getting everything wet. So they are going to stay up here by the driver's seat and then I get to climb into the back. One thing I have to be careful of, which probably doesn't affect most people, is when I climb into the back, I don't want to accidentally kick the manual transmission lever here, uh, because that can cause the gears to grind, which would be kind of unfortunate and really silly since I'm not even driving the car. Now that I'm in the back of the car, I continue to let the engine run for a little while because my sleeping bag is not up to temperature, and actually this whole back of the car, it's not quite as warm as the front of the car. So it takes a while for everything to get up to temperature, and once my sleeping bag's up to temperature, then I'll shut off the engine. The sleeping bag is six pounds of insulation, so it takes a significant amount of time to actually get it warmed up and everything. But once it's warmed up, it stays warm for a long time. And if in the middle of the night I find that I get too cold, I can always turn the engine back on, but I probably won't have to. This is a minus 15 degree sleeping bag, and I tend to go to bed uh, dressed in my cold weather gear as well. So uh, between those two things, I stay perfectly toasty warm and I shouldn't have to worry about anything. But that doesn't mean that there isn't a potential issue, and that is with my electronics. So things like my phone and tablet, and also my power station all have lithium ion batteries, and lithium ion batteries don't like to be frozen. If they get frozen and you try to discharge the battery by using whatever device it is, uh, that can damage the battery. So to prevent that from happening, um, I generally sleep with my phone and my iPad right next to me, and also my camera. And I do have my power station next to me as well, but it's okay for lithium-ion battery batteries to freeze. You just don't want to be discharging them while they are frozen. So I'm a little bit less concerned about my power station because I just don't use it in the middle of the night. This time of year, my power station is only for providing light and uh, recharging my devices. And I don't recharge my devices at night because I recharge them during the day when I'm driving for work. And that really is pretty much it. This car actually does hold heat pretty well, especially with all the window covers up. Uh, so... I have no doubt by morning uh, things will still be at least above freezing in here. I won't have any problems with my water freezing. I also sometimes do keep my water back here if I'm concerned about it freezing, but at least so far, even down to 20 degrees that I've experienced, I haven't had my water container freeze. So that's just one thing to remember that it doesn't actually get as cold inside the car as it does outside. So I'll see you in the morning and uh, we can find out what happened with the cold weather. Well, I survived the night just fine. 
I have to get up and go to work here, but I was perfectly warm in my sleeping bag and all my nice clothes here. And even my water bottles that were next to me right here, still liquid water, not frozen. So I would call this 15 degree experiment 